Hello and welcome again to Cherry Red Radio. I'm Ian McNay and as always I'm joined by two colleagues, John Reed and Matt Ingham, who will be coming in at various times during the, uh, the next two hours. We're going to play you some great tracks and this time they're nearly all Cherry Red. There's a couple that might not be but they're basically nearly all Cherry Red and they're all top quality. So Cherry Red have got a new box set out called Taking Some Time On. Underground Sounds of 1970, and I'm going to start by playing two tracks from that box set Fleetwood Mac, The Green Man and Ishii, and Van de Graaff Generator, Refugees. So here we go. Thank you. 
That was Fleetwood Mac, The Green Manalishi, 
actually the full title is the Green Manalishi with the Two Prog Crown. And that was, got to number 10, 1970, it was a single. Uh, that was obviously Peter Green's Fleetwood Mac before, uh, before the great change that happened a few years later. And uh, that was allegedly the last song he ever wrote for Fleetwood Mac. And it came to him in a, in a drug-induced dream in which he visited, he was visited by a green dog which barked at him from the afterlife. He understood that the dog represented money, which may well be the case, of course. It's a brilliant track, though. And that uh, was followed by Van de Graaff Generator Refugees, another single, and uh, that came from their album The Least We Can Do Is Wave To Each Other, which is their, um, actually their first proper album that was, I say proper, there was another album that wasn't released in the UK, but that album was, and it was their only top 50 album. So every every three months Cherry Red do a chart which is published on our website which is a genuine chart of ourselves as a top 51 and I thought I'd just read the top 10 which is interesting because it's very varied. So at number 10 we have Luke Haynes setting the dogs on the post-punk postman which came out on vinyl and CD and is a very very good listen. We had number nine Rare Bird Beautiful Scarlet, the recordings in 1969 to 1975. That's a six CD box set. Number eight, Riding the Rock Machine, British 70s classic rock, three CD box set. And we did play some tracks from that on the last show. Number seven, Fanfare for the Uncommon Man, the official Keith Emerson tribute concert. It's a two CD edition. Number six, Agent Steel, No Other Gods Before Me. Number five, Howard Jones in the running, expanded deluxe set. Number four, Ian and I'm going to say Ian Anderson. It was John Anderson, of course. Alias of Sun Hillow, which is a, a two CD box set, which was um, obviously based around the original album. There, number three, Al Stewart, Year of the Cat, fantastic box set, probably his most famous album. Number two, Toya, The Blue Meaning. Two CD box set with it also with a DVD. And number one is again John Anderson animation. And I'm going to play a track from that John Anderson animation album as it's going to be a feature. Um, reading through the top ten of our chart every, every three months when we get the new one. And John Anderson has also got, as I mentioned, one other track, one other album in the top ten, alias of Sun Hillow. And John Anderson has a third entry in the top 51 at number 50 with Song or Seven. So he definitely did deserve the play. And we're going to play Boundaries from the Animation album. Come 
Okay, next I'll ha hand you over to John to talk about Aztec Camera. Yeah, really excited about this new release. We've been working on it for a long time. Uh, it's a nine CD box set on Cherry Red, which spans their their Warner or WEA recording period, 1984 to 1995. So it, it skirts, it skips past the first album and begins with the album Knife and runs right through to Frestonia. And lots of bonus tracks, some which I think are new to CD or have been uh, widely unavailable for some time. So really pleased with it. The box set's called Backwards and Forwards. And we're going to hear the title track of their first WEA album. This is called Knife. Like a child could have the trigger And the best man needn't fall To understand that heaven Could be any place at all Just five colors set in motion And I try again to place it And its features are obscure Every time I turn to face it But I still chase it
That was Knife by Aztec Camera. I'm going to hand back to Ian to talk about Gerald Thomas Moore. Yes, well, he's on a new box set called Separate Paths Together, which is an anthology of British male singer-songwriters 1965 to 1975, which is on Grapefruit. David Wells put this together. What a brilliant collection it is. Many, many acts that I hadn't heard of and some I have heard of. And I'm going to play two tracks back to back. The first one is Say It Ain't So by Murray Head. And the second one is Gerald Thomas Moore, Wake Up.
That was Say It Ain't So by Murray Head, followed by Gerald Thomas Moore and Wake Up. And of course, Murray Head was just a really fascinating character. He was, uh, he was mainly known for being an actor, appeared in several films and, and, and TV series. And he wrote some great songs. And that song, Say It Ain't So, for me, should have been a huge hit all around the world. But it wasn't a hit. It was apparently written about um, Richard Nixon's resignation. And it was a small town newspaper outside Washington, the editor, who uh, had some exclusive proof and evidence of what was going on um, with regard to the scandal around Nixon at that time. And this phrase he used was, say it ain't so Joe. And Murray Head wrote a song about it, which was heavily covered. Um, who actually covered it, John? Do you remember? It was Joe Cocker, wasn't it, I think? Yeah, I think Joe Cocker. There were a few versions. And the track was all over the place and a radio hit. And it often gets played in, in some Desert Island discs and things like that as a real best-kept secret, really. Yeah. And then Gerald Thomas Moore, he, of course, went on to have um, G.T. Moore and the Reggae Guitars. And I think that Wake Up track, well, that was a B-side, wasn't it, to start with when it came out? Yeah, and again, one of those um, underrated songwriters is also a very good song, Pilgrim, that we featured on other box sets. Definitely worth further investigation. Okay, so Esoteric have put out a new collection of songs by Colin Scott. I hadn't actually heard of Colin Scott before, but let me play your track first, then we can talk a little about him. So here's Do the Dance Now, Davy" by Colin Scott. still remember 1945 to the dance now David glad to leave the army glad to be alive to the dance now around the city cause we can't forget the drill can't find a job cause all we know is how to kill do the dance now do the dance now One more. 
time for Queen Anne. Not that Queenie cares. Do the dance now. It's fast forgetting how to sing Will you stay with me When I've broken all the strings To the dance now To the dance now To the dance now To the dance now So that was Colin Scott, Do the Dance Now, Davy, and that's a reissue of an album that came out in 1970. And featured on this album are Peter Gabriel, Phil Collins, Peter Hamill, Robert Fripp, Rick Waitman, John Anderson, incredible group of musicians who got together to help him make the album. And he wasn't really that well known, so, um, and the album should really have done better, but of course it's out now again in Esoteric. I'm sure it'll find its way to a whole new audience. So over to you, uh, John. You've got a little run here of a few releases that you're highlighting in this week's show. Thank you, Ian. Yeah, the first track we're going to play is by uh, a chap called Meryl Fankhauser, or rather his band Moo. Uh, Meryl Fankhauser was based initially in the West Coast and then eventually moved to Hawaii and created this little little band called Moo in the early 70s. And we're going to hear a track from them called On Our Way to Hannah. It was a clear and blustery day down by the ocean. Two silver saucers appeared on the horizon. Sing back. 
that was on our way to Hannah by Moo, uh, featuring Meryl Fankhauser. Also a guy called Jeff Cotton, who's legendary uh, because he was one of the original uh, magic band with Captain Beefheart. And uh, lots of kind of, you know, um, myths and legends around Meryl Fankhauser and, and Moo. Um, their music tends to be quite blissful and serene and uh, has a sort of beatific quality that you'd expect from living in, in a really cool place like Hawaii. And uh, yeah, expect a box set of lots of Meryl Fankhauser related recordings soon. Uh, yeah, moving on to another character from the early 70s, although he's been a journeyman really from the 60s to the present day. Um, ostensibly a blues guitarist, but Miller Anderson started his, his musical journey in the mid-60s with bands like The Voice and The Profile, uh, Carl Stewart and The Profile, and played with, I think, Ian Hunter in various bands in the late 60s. Around the dawn of the 70s, he signed to DRM Records and made an album called Bright City, and this is the title track from that album. Bright city, you've got the best of me. Force changes as the seasons quickly turn. I ask for nothing. Let your fires burn Our feelings are set aside to meet our grief We're searching for something that we don't really need the north No moonlight playing sadly across the love I ask for nothing and get that in return Bright city Let me see you burn That was Bright City by Miller Anderson from his debut solo album issued on DRM at the start of the 70s. We'll be reissuing this probably next year now on Esoteric. And uh, yeah, we're now the proud custodians of much of Miller Anderson's output down the years. Also, he, he also played with Spencer Davis. I remember, I remember seeing him play with Spencer Davis. That's right. He, he definitely was a, a bit like Chris Spedding, maybe. He was a, a gun for hire, guitarist for hire down the years. He played also with uh, the Keith Hartley Band. And in fact, interestingly, spinning off the Keith Hartley Band, he formed a band called Hemlock and they put a record out on DRAM two years after his solo debut, which we're also now the owners of. So again, we'll be reissuing the Hemlock record next year. Um, yeah, and for me personally, I grew up in a little town called Shoreham-by-Sea and that's where Miller was based. And I went to school 
with his son, also called Miller Anderson. So, yeah, I remember growing up, we didn't really have many rock stars or would-be rock stars in Shoreham by Sea, other than Leo Sayer was from our hometown. But, uh, yeah, Miller Anderson was one of them. So, so yeah, moving on. Um, we're also working on a new package uh, by John Mellencamp, although in the 70s he went under the name of Johnny Cougar. And this is part of the main man catalogue owned by Tony DeFries, who some of you will know, most famous for discovering David Bowie amongst other artists in the 70s. And we're working on a package uh, based around his two albums for Main Man. The first one released in 1976. The next one didn't come out till much later. And we're just uh, trawling the archives for unreleased material. But to me, a bit like Bruce Springsteen and uh, maybe Tom Petty in places. But what, what Johnny Cougar tapped into was that kind of blue collar rock in the 70s. It was, it was the, in a way, not like their own version of punk, but it was music that spoke to the average person in the street unlike the kind of more the bigger stadium rock of the day and none more so than this track which is called american dream American Dream by Johnny Cougar from 1976. Expect a new box set soon. Moving on to another uh, singer-songwriter from the 70s. Uh, we're very proud now to represent the, the DJM era recordings of Philip Goodhand Tate. He's got an amazing CV. We can't go into all of the details of what he's done down the years, but we already look after his many 60s recordings with the, the Stormsville Shakers, who did a brilliant album with uh, American R&B star Larry Williams. He then went on to front a psychedelic group called Circus in the late 60s. And like many of his contemporaries, um, he, he went the singer-songwriter route in the early 70s. And, and the records have been, frankly, notoriously overlooked or woefully overlooked. And we're going to play a track from one of them. This is called Oh Rosanna. I like to think of Rosanna Getting old in a rocking chair Feeding a dog lying at her feet Moaning about the stairs That she has to climb down in Louisiana Where the sun is sinking low The brown-eyed man is selling what he can As he goes from door to door Think of Atlantis, where Martin Luther. 
the king was born As a place for love And I'm thinking of Making my telephone call Long distance down to Alabama That place is a tension zone Brown eyed man Can't understand why his house is not his home On down the road I go Oh, Roseanne I don't go fast I won't go slow And I'll get home Gonna love you more That was Oh Rosanna by Philip Goodhand Tate. We're looking to put a package out in November containing all of those four albums with bonus tracks. Um, and again, one of his contemporaries, another chap who had an amazing CV in the 60s before putting out his own records in the early 70s was Mike Hurst, who perhaps first made his name with the Springfields, with Dusty Springfield in the very early 60s, one of the first U UK acts to have an American hit. And then he coupled having a solo career which was modestly successful, with a much more uh, successful career as a songwriter and producer. And that took care of most of the 1960s. And in the early 70s, he made two albums for Capitol Records, bizarrely one released in the UK and one in the US. And we're going to hear a track from one of those now. This is Face From The Past. <laughs> think that speed is driving fast and you know I love you like I do For you the law will always smile But you ain't seen Chicago style and you know I love you like I do To get home Well, I've seen my wife and kids I'll forget everything I've known You're a face from the past How long can it last Till it's all the same to me You're a face from the past But you're sure changing fast But you'll soon be just like me Round your door, nine tenths of the world is poor, and you know I love you like I do. Patience, pain is there to see, but you can't know their misery, and you know I love you. Kids, I'll forget everything I've known You're a face from the past How long can it last Till it's all the same to me You're a face from the past But you're sure changing fast And you'll soon be just like me
just like me was Face from the Past by Mike Hurst. In October, we're releasing a four CD box set featuring all of Mike's solo output, but also the best of his productions with everyone from P.P. Arnold through to Sam Fox in the 80s and lots of stuff in between. Well, yeah, missed out Cat Stevens. Yes, although Cat Stevens (laughs) Stevens isn't sadly on the box set for licensing reasons. But yeah, Yeah. Shawaddy Waddy. We work with a lot of cult bands like uh, the Australian Playboys and Human Instinct. Loads of records now worth hundreds of pounds amongst collectors. So it's that. Shaking Stevens, he produced as well. And the Nolan Sisters in the late 70s, yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah, and equally loads of unknown bands like this from the 60s. He told us a story once about this group, the Appalachians, where he ended up having a, he, did, he created this folk rock group uh, in for one off single. And then the next minute, he has a knock on, his, knock on the door, and two gentlemen who clearly were mafioso uh, knocked on the door to speak to him, all very polite. Apparently in America, Appalachian had become a term you didn't use because there'd been a, a massacre of mafia types in the Appalachians. And Mike didn't realise this, so he had managed to negotiate his way out of it. So that was the end of the Appalachians. But yeah, so many little tracks down the years that he was involved with. And like we said, launched Sam Fox's career in the 80s. So he had a career that lasted a good 20 years when he was at the top of his game. Yeah, and that's part of what we do at Trevor, isn't it? We put out, put out lots of great things that you know but we love finding all the obscure things that you don't know. Yeah, we'll have to play a track by the Appalachians on another show in the future. So I think we're handing over to Matt Ingham now, aren't we, to talk about Fox. Thanks, Ian. Hi. Um, nice to be here again another month. Um, one of the things we like to keep on top of here is all the sync deals that we do. And for anyone that might not know, sync, in certainly in industry terms, is where you have one of your songs that you represent placed in an advert, TV program, a film or a computer game, something like that. And it's always quite fun to see or hear our tracks used in those big Netflix and Apple TV productions. Um, so one of the most recent ones that we've had is is uh, the song Imagine Me, Imagine You, which was by Fox, Nusha Fox and Friends. Uh, which was from the sort of mid uh, 70s. I think it reached number 15 in the charts in the mid 70s. And um, yeah, timeless pop, you know, little ditty, a, a pop classic, and has been used in an upcoming Apple TV production called Physical, which is based in San Diego in the 80s. And uh, well, I won't ruin it for you, but it's uh, all about aerobics, dance and aerobics, and uh, the darker side of dance and aerobics, if you can imagine that there would be one. So uh, I'm sure you'll be watching that, Ian, I imagine. Uh, probably not, Matt, no. But thanks for the tip-off. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure it'll be John's cup of tea. <laughs> so here's that track, Imagine Me, Imagine You by Fox. Following 
and you inside each other's eyes. What, what would we see? Imagine me, imagine you inside each other's arms. What, what would we do? That was Imagine Me, Imagine You by Fox. And uh, I'm going to pass over to John Reed now, who's got one of our favourite parts of the show. Thanks, Matt. Yeah, this is the moment you've all been waiting for, the the uh, part of the show when we play a previously unheard, undocumented production by Joe Meek. As some of you will, will know, we are uh, now the, the proud custodians of the legendary mythical tea chest tapes, and we're going through digitising everything. Uh, looking to finish that process uh, next spring, by all accounts. And as, as some of you regular listeners to the show will know that we've been playing the odd track here and there. Um, I think it was the last show we played a really unusual song that sounded a bit like Sid Barrett. It had this kind of ethereal, psychedelic quality. Clearly seemed to be from the, the mid to late 60s, though sadly Joe died in early 67. So there was only really a narrow time frame. That it could have been recorded. Anyway, the good news is we tracked down who the track's by. It appears to be members of a band called The Impact, who only put out one single. I think it was the second to last record that Joe Meek produced that was released. Uh, so the band were called The Impact. They put out a single called Too Far Out. But this, the song we played was from uh, a session recorded perhaps summer 66 prior to the single. And the chat from the band was absolutely over the moon that we'd found it. So hopefully we'll find an outlet for that on on CD and maybe vinyl at some point soon. Um, For this show, we're going to play another song that we, our our dedicated team of Joe Meek experts, couldn't identify. This is more typical of Joe Meek production, probably dates from 62, 63. It's got a bit of a beat era sound to it, but definitely still got the Joe Meek stamp. It's a male vocal track. Probably a band, but could be a singer on their own. And this is called I'll Wait For You. Love is for lovers. Dreams are for dreamers. I dream of you. Stars for stargazers. Sun for the sunbird, I sing of you. My body has no love, cause my love you carry with you. My whole being has no meaning, for meaning in my life takes two. Day is for toiling, the night is for crying, I cry for you. Keep on ticking 
was I'll Wait For You by, well, we don't know. It's an, a Joe Meek production. You can hear that. Very distinctive. Answers are on a postcard, please. Any ideas as to who that artist might be, we're all ears. And I'll hand back to Ian. Thanks, John. One of the bands that we've really enjoyed working with over the years is Mercury Rev. We've done quite a few reissues with them, taking their original albums and putting them in deluxe box sets, with lots of extras. And the latest one, which will be out very soon, that we've done that with is Snowflake Midnight. I'm going to play two tracks now, back to back, from actually, not actually from the original album, but from a live album that's contained within the box set, which has obviously two tracks from the original album. And the ones I'm going to play are Snowflake in a Hot World and October Sunshine.
at all you've done And how far you've come You're where you should be You're where you should be You're where That's bigger than you Melting into someone Someone new Snowflake in a hot world Don't let them get to you Don't let them tell You're not the same But you're where you should be Nothing to hold on to And it's a long way
that was Snowflake in a Hot World and October Sunshine, the live versions from the live album in the Mercury Rev box set, which is based around their album Snowflake Midnight, which came out actually in September 2008 originally and was very well received at the time. And I know there's a band that they really like, that um, Mercury Rev really like, and that's Bardenkel, which uh, come from Birmingham. And when I read that, I read it very recently on their website, it just reminded me that I had this album from Bardenkel that came out so many moons ago, and it was released on a small Birmingham label called Initial Records. Um, I'm going to play now an appointment with the master from Bardenkel.
That was an appointment with the master by Bardenkel. And Bardenkel were originally from Birmingham and they used to support Led Zeppelin and Black Sabbath. So they really were in at the beginning of that interesting breakthrough from, um, from Birmingham bands. And we'll see, we'll see what happens. Maybe it gets reissued. In fact, we did reissue it at one point uh, on, a, on, a, on a Cherry Red label uh, many years ago. But maybe it's time to relook at that album again. So we've been, we've been working through the Bebop Deluxe catalogue over the past couple of years, reissuing and expanded box sets, all their classic albums. And the last one in that series is Live in the Air Age. And we have, we have two versions. We have one which is a three CD uh, box set, and we have one that is a 16 CD box set, a real epic. Of course, Bebop Deluxe was Bill Nelson's band, and ironically, this album, this live, the original live album, which came out in July 1977, was their biggest hit album, going in the top 10 at number 10, staying there for a time, I think four weeks. Um, it really is a wonderful album, and my favourite track on that album is Adventures in a Yorkshire Landscape. And here it is.
That was Adventures in a Yorkshire Landscape by Bebop Deluxe. Now, John Reed and I love having lunches with people we're connected with, and we hear so many interesting stories. And last week we had lunch with Tom Newman, and he was originally a band called July, and we did re we did reissue um, a box set of July recordings quite recently. And I'm going to play a track now from from that box set called My Clown. Clown by July and of course Tom Newman he told us so many stories but he went on from July to help build the ver original Virgin Manor studio and the first album he produced was Tubular Bells by Mike, Mike Oldfield which is an extraordinary thing really because he just told us the whole story of how he originally got the uh, cassette from Mike Oldfield and there wasn't a lot of interest in the Virgin Elite uh, at that time towards that project, but he insisted it could do something special. And in the end, they let him have the studio time and recorded the album. Of course, it was number one throughout the world. It was just a sensation. And Mike Oldfield went on to have a very rich career, which is, which is still going. So I'm now going to hand over to, again to Matt Ingham, who is going to go through the last four tracks of the show. Thanks, Ian. Yeah, and it's another sync, I think, to start with. Um, we, a little bit different to the Fox track that I played earlier, this is the early 80s punk band, The Ejected, who have been recently 
had their track Have You Got 10p used for a film about chess boxing. You ever heard of chess boxing? No, I haven't. Neither has Tell I. me more about it, Matt. It is, it's not for the faint hearted. It's a sport which alternates between a round of boxing and a round of chess. Wow. You've got to think, by the sort of fifth or sixth round, your chess game must be all over the place, I would have thought. And your boxing is and all your over the place. <laughs> your boxing probably gets a bit better. Yeah. Um, anyway, yeah, their, their, their track, um, Have You Got 10p, has been used in that. So, yeah, go and check it out. This is The Ejected, Have You Got 10p. That was the ejected. Have you got 10p? And uh, well, you know, the sad thing is, Matt, I'm just thinking that with the way the world is going towards a cashless society, yeah. there won't be anybody asking for 10p anymore, will there? They're going to have to, unless they have a credit card machine well, and say, can I have 10p? Or, I think well, so. Yeah, that does seem to be the way it's going, doesn't yeah, it? Very sad. Well, talking about money, actually, that's where my next track choice has come from. I'm going to play uh, an old Go-Kart Mozart song because we love Lawrence here. And this is another song about money. It's got those immortal lyrics from Lawrence. I'm living in relative poverty. I'm living on a tenner a day. So from 10p to £10, but still uh, it's all relative, I suppose. But it's nice to be able to announce that we... I've got more f- coming from Lawrence next year. Early next year, we're hoping to do a felt reissue series, all 10 albums, followed by a brand new Lawrence album uh, from his new iteration, which is called Mozart Estate. He's no longer Go-Kart Mozart. We did play um, a single record store day on the last show, the show before that. So this is brand new material from Lawrence. But to, uh, to celebrate that, here's an old track, Relative Poverty.
That was Go-Kart Mozart, Relative Poverty. Uh, I'm going to go back to the sinks now, I think. One more interesting sink for us was an, a documentary called Oh, It Hurts. And that's spelt H-E-R-T-Z. It's a feature documentary, um, a German feature documentary. And actually sounds very interesting, although I've not seen it yet. It looks at how sound affects us in ways that you don't quite realize um and i think there's actually a bit of a shock revelation within the documentary that has to do with the third reich nazi germany and that at that time having not seen it i can't say too much but um it does look incredibly interesting just from the trailer and we've had a couple of our favorite uh avant-garde musicians the residents tracks used in that um the one of the tracks was called the waver and the other is ginger's lament which is uh taken from the latest reissue that we've done called gingerbread man so this is that's the track i'm going to play ginger's lament by the residents That was Ginger's Lament by The Residents, an electronic track, uh, and I'm going to stick with that theme by playing a track by a band called Eat Static. Um, this is a track called Gulf Breeze. It's taken from the album Abduction. And it's a, well, Eat Static were an offshoot of the sort of probably more well known band Osric Tentacles. They came from Somerset. Uh, in England in the late 80s, early 90s. Uh, they were on Planet Dog, which is a label that we've acquired now. We represent their catalogues. So 
this is the start of a big reissue campaign with uh, with that label and um yeah i'm going to play golf breeze by eat static you a fan of this ian pass <laughs> 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 that's fair enough i love it i think it's fantastic that's what makes cherry red go yeah. around doesn't it it's we're diverse we're that's diverse the most important exactly. thing and some people love certain things and everything we put out at cherry red someone in the office loves it in fact often a lot of people in the office love them and some people are not so inspired which exactly. is the way the world is that's what makes it so interesting here so yeah this is a bit of electronic music with a little bit of trance and rave thrown in for good measure it's a good fun uh track and um, the last track, I think, of the day, isn't it? I think it is, yeah. So here's that track, Gulf Breeze by Eat Static.
that was Eat Static and Golf Breeze. And I think that was the last song of the day, wasn't it, Ian? I think it is. It was another varied show, which is the important thing. And thank you, everybody, for listening to. See you next time.